Hello everyone, welcome. With the new video today, we will discuss speech act theory. Let's first go through some definitions. An act of oral communication from a grunt to a very long conversation. Speech act indicate that an utterance can have the same impact as an action. Actions performed via utterances are generally called speech acts. So from definition it's clear that sometime we perform actions through utterances and those actions which are performed via utterances are generally called speech acts. For example if you order someone that bring me a glass of water so what are you doing you are performing an action through an utterance now the process of bringing the glass of water is an action but you are not doing it you are doing it by influencing someone else and this action is performed via utterance. The concept of speech act theory was proposed by John Longshaw Austin in 1962 and uh, it is later developed by John R. Searle in 1969. According to them, Language is not only used to inform and describe things, but it is also used to do things and perform acts. They further states that making statements may be paradigm paradigmatic use of language, but there are all sorts of other things we can do with words, like we can make requests, ask questions, give orders, make promises, offer apologies, and so on. According to Austin, speech act theory deals with communication, but communication in its wider sense does not refer to simple information, but rather it furthermore includes making promises, apologies, apologizes, and uh, make decisions. According to Searle, speech act theory is designed to help us understand how people accomplish things with their words. It means that every time a speaker utters a sentence, he is attempting to accomplish something with words. Specifically, he intends to have some impact on the listener and wants the listener to recognize this intention. Austin and Searle established that Whenever we say something, three simultaneous acts are performed. The first act is a locutionary act. A locutionary act is the reason or purpose for utterance. The intention we have while saying or writing. In short, the intention in the mind of a speaker behind an utterance is called a locutionary act. When this intention takes a concrete form and it become words, then it's called locutionary act. Locutionary act is the basic utterance producing meaningful linguistic expression. It is the act of saying or writing something. So when the intention takes a concrete form, it is the concrete form is now a locutionary act. And when this concrete form produce some eff effect on listener, this is then called perlocutionary. The perlocutionary act is the interpretation of listener or the effect produced on listener or reader. When we utter something to intend an effect, this is basically response of hearing the effect of words created on hearer. So there are three acts. Illocutionary is the intention 
behind an utterance. Locutionary is the concrete utterance, while the perlocutionary is the interpretation of listener or the effect produced on listener. The illocutionary act is further divided into the following. Like the first one is representatives. Rep representative is the speech act in which the speaker describes something like for example he is a good boy. The meal is delicious. When the speaker describes something this is called representative. Directives. When speaker intention is to do something for him and the speaker influence others to do something is called directives like you told someone that give me your pen or give bring me a glass of water or if you request someone this is called directives in expressive, the speaker conveys inner feelings and inner states like, for example, if the speaker says that I'm not feeling well, or I am sad, I'm angry. These are the examples of expressives. Commissives. Commissives are when the speaker commit to a future action. In commissives, we include the promises and threatening, etc. For example, you told someone that, I'll help you, I promise you. These are the example of commissives in which you commit to some future action. Declaratives. In declaratives, the speaker change or alter circumstances. These are orders. Like uh, you say that, get out, polish my shoes. These are orders. There is a slight difference between the directives and declaratives. In directives, the listener has a choice that whether he accept your request or not. If you told someone in directive that bring me a glass of water, it depends on the listener that whether he do it or not. But in declarative, listener has no option. There is the relation of boss. And servant. So this is all about speech act theory. In short, speech act theory are the actions which are performed via utterances. The theory is proposed by John Longshaw and later on developed by uh, uh, later on developed by cell. There are three simultaneous acts, illocutionary, locutionary and perlocutionary. Following are some types of illocutionary acts. So this is all about speech act theory. I hope that uh, the video will be helpful and you will get, you will able to get the basic concept of speech act theory. Thank you very much.